my friends stand by me only if I'm right. I come out of triple darkness just to see the light. If I say it once, I guarantee I say it twice. If they know me, I ain't going out without a fight. In my dreams, I'm a killer, but for God, man. Try to play it cool, but it's getting hard, man. Rolling with the real and death to all the flaws, man. Not too many on me, yeah, it's kinda hard, man. In my room, sitting in my room. Know they waiting on me, and I'm coming soon. Never been a sellout, I've never been a coon. Y'all be on the camera acting. I'ma show them how I drew it. But don't no yes or no answers. All right. If a parent fails, if a black, brown, or poor parent fails to hold their child accountable, they are increasing the likelihood that they go to prison exponentially. Welcome to the B2M Crew Podcast with five <laughs> brothers who have been friends for over 40 years who have a combined 13 children, including 12 sons, and have been married a collective 100 years, get together to talk about parenting, current events, and our journeys together as brothers and fathers, as men. And so we're just bringing you into these conversations um, with the podcast. We're broadcasting from the Code Building in downtown Charlottesville, Virginia, a wonderful co-working space for entrepreneurs. Excellent amenities. Come ke- check out the Cold Building. I'm I'm the Wave of Black. I'm joined over here to my right by John J.G. Yates. What up, though? Got my man Talik over there, the world's ambassador, Waki and James Muhammad. Peace. Uh, brother J. Mu. Uh, shout out to Win Productions, our executive producer, Tyreek on the Move, our heart media's finest. Brand new studio for Win Productions down in Fayetteville, Georgia. Uh, you can check them out on social media. What's the phone number people want? Yeah. Media production services in the Atlanta metro area, uh, Talik. 754 225 2805. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, what's up, fellas? What up? What's going on? Hey, look, man, man, look. we talking about the A word ATL. What? I'm going to give y'all three guesses. (laughs) ATL, no. The ATM. (laughs) One of the most important A words there is, and I know y'all going to say atonement. No. Okay, <laughs> brother, brother, brother. I, was, I thought somebody's be nasty. You know y'all nasty. I thought somebody uh, said, hey. I almost said it. I, almost <laughs> said it. I, I was waiting for him to say it. Man, you is know it, the word is. What's that? Accountability. Oh, mm. accountability is huge. How did we teach our young people to be accountable, and what did we teach them about accountability? To me. The example I'm going to give is accountability gone wrong that I was telling my sons about. I was so disappointed. Y'all know Javante Davis went to jail. Uh, he got he just got out again. But you know, right after the fight, he went to jail. <laughs> yeah. He got house arrest on the charge. He had a hit and run charge. Um, left the scene of the crime and all of that. Pled guilty. Lawyer did a great job. Worked out a plea agreement for him for him to live in Florida, in a uh, was a that condo. allegedly? No, this no, is this, true. This is no, I know, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> for him to live in Florida, mm-hmm. on house arrest, at his trainer's house or something like that, right? One bedroom joint. Later, week later in the news, Javante Davis, the judge, revoked his uh, house arrest because he had moved into a one million dollar condo <laughs> in Baltimore. <laughs> and didn't report to the court that he was leaving house arrest in Florida to go do his house arrest in Baltimore. His words, and I was just beginning, I had just bought my first Javante fight before this. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm not going to get another, but that was my first you one. Gotta I'm, ride right, with I'm my gonna man. start rocking with him. This was his word. This judge trying to lock, keep me locked up because she don't want me to see my family. She want me to see them in a one-bedroom apartment. And I say all of that to say is that is the absence of personal accountability. No, Javante, she revoked your house arrest because you did not tell the court what address you were going to be at. <laughs> so my right. point is we got a huge problem out there in our community with being held accountable. Well, let me, let me real quick, you know how I do with okay, the yeah, definitions real quick especially an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's 
actions. Simply put. Failure to account for one's actions. So as a young parent, my idea of accountability was a little bit about what we talked about in another episode was, look, I, got, I have to address everything I see. And I'm not saying be dogged about it, but I have to say something about it. I have to address it because they have to know what the standard is consistently, consistently. And even though they're going to continue to violate the standard, I can't let them outwork me. I can't let their rebellion against the standard outwork me repeating the standard and forcing the standard. And so when I um, started working in the charter school world, they define charter schools as schools that provide autonomy in exchange for accountability. Mm. So if you apply that to life, autonomy in exchange for accountability, the more you show you can manage yourself, you know, the right, more right. the more accountable you are to managing yourself, the more autonomy you get, the more freedom you get. So what are you all st- uh, thoughts about how that can be taught to young people, you know, when you're a parent? Anybody? Who, who wants to go first? Anybody believe accountability is important? You do what you want to do. And... What, 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 what? I, oh, go ahead, I, I'll take I'll take a stab at it. Um, so real quick, autonomy, what that is, is the quality or state of being self-governing. Okay. Self-governing and accountable for actions. You going to talk about how you shut the school down, Joe? No. <laughs> I'm, uh, so because they weren't being accountable, <laughs> took away their autonomy. <laughs> I like. Of them. I I feel like I'm a very. Um, I feel like I'm. I'm always try to hold myself accountable, and and, and if I fall short, I don't have a problem with identifying. Um, I'm 50 years old, and uh oh, and uh, that's right, and. Uh, <laughs> And what happened um, in January, I um, signed up for something called the Morning Meetup. It's part of uh, David Shan's podcast, Social Proof. Shout out to them. Um, and what we do every morning at 745, we get on a call and we talk about two things that we're going to be accountable for today. Along with, we also have a, a book that we read collectively and then we give our takeaways and then david shan himself or a guest speaker come on and and you know they'll have a topic or whatever and so i've been a part of this for what, about seven months and um it's, it's it's so good because you know when you hold yourself accountable i, I you know in the meetings if I fall short and I I didn't do the two things that I was supposed to do to move 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 the mark in my business, I would say hey, I fell miserably yesterday, you know. And and sometimes they'll be like, man, why are you so hard on yourself? And it, it's so frustrating when when I miss the mark, right? And 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 I said it, it came out my mouth, so I want to be able to, to deliver on it. And so, um. And then also some things that 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 I want to be accountable. Like, I don't like fooling with you know, social media, right? But at the same time, I had to learn, I had to grow, and I'm still maturing in that area, right? Mm. And so a lot of times in the group, I might say I'm a post or go live, and that makes me do it because I it came out my mouth. And so that those are the things that I do as an adult. So just because you grown don't mean you don't have to be accountable to somebody, mm-hmm. even if it's just to yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I'm demonstrating that, self, uh, that part personally, even though I didn't, I didn't have any struggles in the area, but it feel good because I'm doing something consistent. And, and, and I'm doing it consistent for the whole year, you know? And I just want to be a, another level of demonstrating this in my household um, letting them know just because you get a certain age don't mean you don't have goals, you don't grow, et cetera. And that's just what I do, you know. So accountability never stops, even when you're an adult. How does how do we get there? Do y'all agree, first of all, that part of the problem with what we say that we have problems with our young people is, is that there's not enough accountability. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. First thing we say is there's not enough parents involved. Then we say there's no accountability. Correct. How do we get there? Why do people not hold their children accountable? Well, I, what think, is be, be, I think because the parent themselves lack their own personal accountability. Okay. And so, so if they're not practicing it, and they not doing it is 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 not of of uh, of of a value, or maybe I won't say a value, but at the same time, and, and, well, yeah, I would say maybe not important yeah. to them, and um and it's, it should be very important that you can hold yourself accountable, and you need to. I mean, that's that's a val a valuable thing that you need to teach your young ones. Mm -hmm. You know, period. Well, you gonna mm -hmm. say, J Mo? I was gonna say be. I don't think we recognize the lessons early on uh, or even, I guess, looking back as, as far as our parents or whatever, the, their idea of accountability was that of like, if, if say for instance, why did you do such and such? Well, everybody, because everybody else was doing so-and-so. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so you're looking at the first thing or example of not being uh, accountable to oneself is always putting the blame on why you didn't do something was because somebody else, you know what I'm saying? And so I don't think we recognize those lessons of accountability when, with the example of, 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 you know, um, when your parents may ask you, well, what did you do such and such for? Well, every, because everybody else was doing it. I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm talking about you. Why? Why <laughs> you? Why isn't it that you didn't? So because everybody else was doing it, I was just saying, <laughs> right. But I don't think it, it's it's harped on and, and enough uh, focus is placed on that to uh, at that opportunity to teach them. That's that's the um, one of the uh, teachable moments for you to say, hey, well, look, you need need to take accountability. We mm -hmm. it, it needs to be you. Why it is? Why is it that you did it? I don't want to hear it, it was because um, of someone else as to why you didn't. So. Let me know. Tell me what it, why it is that you didn't. So um, emphasizing that the you part of it, whereas the ownership that they have to take. We, you know, we look at it now as as the um, or the way we describe it is, you know, own your shit. You know, so, oh, excuse my language, but yeah. own, you know, yeah. own own it. Yeah. You know, and people, and and that's the difficulty of it though is who, <laughs> how comfortable is it for you to you know what I'm saying to point at yourself. You know what I mean, and so we have to, I think, eliminate that, the uh, the uncomfortableness of that for for us for our children when they're young. Why are we Why to, are we so to, sensitive as adults that we can't look at our on. own shortcomings? Yeah, yeah. that, that like, annoys we, we, the we, crap out of me. Like we just sensitive, like like we think our shit don't stink, like for real. Yeah, yeah. like we really be walking around believing this, or like, oh man, I fell short. I go, like, we, so we, we all fall back, short. It's uncomfortable. That's not that's. It's, well, Self-analysis is one of the most difficult things to do. But the first thing, when, and when I hear accountability, I think of integrity and character. You know, that's the first thing that I thought about when I think about accountability. And then ownership of that. So when you have a certain amount of character or integrity, you set a standard, or a standard's been set for you if you're a child. It's easy. You know what I mean? When and you then, handle those things. Right. Most and people, then, hey, yeah. it's, it's my fault. And that's how you learn. Because if you don't take ownership, how are you going to ever grow? How will you ever grow from any situation? To the next situation if everything is somebody else's fault and that's a slippery slope to being narcissist because it's never your fault it's always the next person's fault and you get stuck you that, get, that's inter that's an interesting dichotomy if i'm using that properly but you said that be, to be narcissistic as but then yeah not john, john turned the john up to another level he turned he's saying that's the uh that's the, the beginning seed. the markings of a, a narcissist yeah Damn. they yeah. can't ever accept responsibility for their action and, and, and listen Narcissism, man, is prevalent out here today, bro. But that's interesting to have such so much of a focus on narcissism of yourself that you don't even recognize. That's the point. Self grandiose. The mm. They think uh, everything good is about them. That man said I am grandiose, this. bro. Absolutely. This man dropping some <laughs> stuff, yeah. man. But if anything goes wrong, it's always your fault or your fault. It's never, it's never my fault. Mm. I take, I do all the good. Anything that don't happen good is on you. Right, right. And that's not. I'm, that's, I'm sorry I made you feel that. I'm, I'm sorry that what happened made you made feel you, that exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Those whack, uh, fake apologies, I guess. I think part Man. of how that happens and, and, and the integrity piece is, is crucial because it's all about integrity. You can't have accountability without integrity. But I think one of the ways that happens is that when 
parents are raising or adults are raising young people when a when the little kid or the little child makes an error when the parents scold or correct they do it in a judgmental way and as a result the kid starts to take it as an indictment of character and so they don't want to look like I'm not bad, I'm not this, I'm not that. You know, they they, they start to defend. You know, and it, and it's because they have been scolded and criticized. See, you can correct behavior without criticism. Mm. And and many times adults don't do that. So when you're correcting behavior and it comes with criticism, the child doesn't want to be criticized. Give an example. Can I, can I, can I just, I, don't, are you, don't lose your point. But when you say criticism, I just want to be clear on what you're talking about. That's why I say Because you're example. not talking about criticism in terms of critical analysis. Like, because it's criticism right. when you're getting feedback. You're talking about like mean spirited, talking down to you about it. How can you be so stupid? Okay. I got you. I got that you. kind of okay, criticism. Okay, got you, got you. Okay. What the hell were you thinking? You, you acting like a fool. Yeah. Those types of words and phrases coming yeah. out of Injurious. adults' mouth. That's what so I now you just like your example. daddy. Yeah. So now <laughs> the kid don't want no parts of that type of criticism and that type of indictment. So they don't learn to say, "I did that. I'm sorry. I made a mistake." Now their their instinct is to defend, to protect, and and Trend. yeah, to defend and protect. And as a result, they are like. Well, he did it you, too. Oh, you made me do it. Yeah, you made me do it. He did it too. And if so. If you hadn't said this, I wouldn't have said that. If you hadn't did this, I wouldn't have did that. Man, let What's me tell you something. the first thing y'all say is the police pull you up and give you a ticket? All these other people out here committing real crime. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say nothing. <laughs> you need to be arresting them. I'm going to work every true. day. I'm just going to work. Yeah. These people out here go robbing people. Why don't you go catch me? some real criminals? <laughs> yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> right. Because they don't want to be held accountable. Man, I, like, I, coach, I coach AAU basketball for almost 20 years, man. I never saw. That was the place where. You see kids not wanting to be held accountable the most. You know, the, something happens in the game, right? So a mistake happens. Somebody get a backdoor layup. And I and I pull the kid out of the game. I'm like, what were you doing? Why did you make that mistake? Well, I was going to do this, but so-and-so didn't do this. So I was over here. I said, you know what? That very well may be true. But if you would have done what you were supposed to do, I'd be yelling at them right now. Uh, you know, you I'm yell yelling. at them. Well, it depends. Okay, some of them. I was just checking. You know, so so <laughs> so, 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 the, so the point yeah, the yeah. point being <laughs> is, you are accountable for your play. You are accountable for the things you do on the floor. You are. I understand how it's all interconnected. But let me fix that as a coach. Don't you go out here trying to fix those types of things and those types of errors. And so what I think we, I try to convey to my sons is that it is way easier to own the mistake, say you were wrong, apologize, whatever you need, tell the truth, and move forward. That is so much easier than trying to make excuses come up with lies and telling stories and all that. And it's going to happen again. Right. Yeah. It's going to happen again. It's going to keep yeah. on happening. Yeah. And then and, you got to have a and, and when you right. hold so yourself you accountable, that allows the people around you to say, you know what? I can take his word to the bank. Right. I know, I know, I know, I know a young lady, I know a woman who, whose son was accused of shooting someone. All right. And they arrested the guy, brought him into the, you know, police department. And the mama, they called the mama, she go down there. Now, she didn't say, my son didn't do it. Right. She said to the detective, can you give me five minutes with my son? And when she said that, she went to her son and said, did you do what them people say you did? And he said, no, mama, I did not do that. That is the moment right there when you need to have that relationship with your child. 
because she had already told the officer, look, when I asked him if he did it, if he say, yeah, I'm going to need five minutes to whoop him because he going he gonna to get it from me. But when he said he didn't do it, she immediately went to the detective. My son didn't do it. Y'all go ahead with your investigation. She knew in her heart because her and her son had that relationship. That bond. Exactly. And he had demonstrated that in crunch time and moments of crisis, you can trust what I tell you. That moment is why we had to teach all of our kids to be accountable because you get picked up by the police for something you didn't do. When it's crunch time, I got to know when you tell, I can't, uh, did my son really do that? He right. might be showing some shady stuff. Man, you don't never want to be in that position with your kid. Because because there's some parents did a call the police. That sounds like something my son had done. Yeah. Right. If, if you have some if parents, you are consistent, some parents, and, and in some parents, lying. they got him on tape. Yeah. And hey, it ain't my boy. Yeah. So they learn that stuff from their parents. Yeah. If you consistently lying and not being accountable for your actions, we all make mistakes, right? Acknowledge it, learn from it, move on. That's right. Especially with your children, right? And that's why I tell my kids, nobody got your back more than me and your mother. But if you continue to lie and not be accountable to us, when something really go down, if it does, I'd be like, you've been lying to me for years. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what he did. Get the there. truth yeah. out of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my wife would always tell Courtney, look, uh, I can't help you. I can't help you at all if you lying about anything. You know what I mean? About, about whatever it is you may have done or whatever. I can't help you. So you need to just come clean, say, tell the, tell the truth about whatever it is right now, and then maybe I can help you. But so, if you lying, I can't help you. So I don't if know I get into lie. something and I tell you out the truth, y'all gonna help me get out of it? Say again? It's a, if I get into something and I tell you out the truth, y'all gonna help me get out of it? Depending on what the price is. The price hey, for look, you? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm going down, I'm gonna go ahead. I don't know about the rest of y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna die with John, man. Cause I called John a couple of weeks ago. I said, man, I need $10,000. I need you to shoot somebody, one of the two. <laughs> one of the other. Guess what the answer was? Who you want me to shoot? <laughs> nah. Yeah. You gotta hit, you gotta give me your gun and bullets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, man, I'm only there when you protect yourself. I said, lie. my man. I said, my man. Oh, funny. He passed a flying car. Yeah, 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 yeah. oh, sure. He ain't trying to talk me out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He could have tried that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look. I'm slavery connection alert. Y'all know I always got the slavery connection to what we talked about. Okay. What's the impact of our collective trauma as black and brown and poor people on our everyday management of life issues, right? And when I say our collective trauma, I'm talking about you too black, you too dumb. Uh, just stay with those two. Out of all of the insults we got during slavery, mm -hmm. you're an animal, you're a monkey, you're a gorilla, all of that, right? Everything that we were told about ourselves was wrong. I'm talking about, I mean, we, something was wrong with us, mm -hmm. right? Right. You ain't good enough. You're going to make the bad decision. You're going to, you know, so now you, you leave slavery and we moving around with more independence. I'm trying to get to this idea where Waukee, he captured it good on a daily basis, like in real time, present day. Um, you got to be held accountable for your actions and you can't be, you got to be adamant about that, right? Right. Because we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want it to be us, right? We got so much of that in our history as a family. We so wrong <laughs> that we just want to be right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're we, we, we tired of hearing that we wrong. And so, and so now, so now if I just make a mistake, a regular mistake, it's way bigger than just, you know, me doing the individual mistake is, man, you done let them white folks see you do such and such. Man, them people done seen you do such. Sometimes the fact that they saw it resonates more with your loved ones that you did it than the fact that the thing that you did. Right. Yeah. And so this whole thing about I just can't accept my mistake to me goes back to the issue of self-love. 
Because if I love me, I love all of me. I don't just love the things I do that's good. I accept the things about me that I need to weed out and get better. I say, you know what? I ain't perfect, but this is me. I, I fell short on that one. Dang. It ain't got nothing to do with whether or not I'm still a God and a child of God. It ain't got nothing to do with whether or not I can still be somebody's role model. I just made a mistake. And I'm going to absolutely make some more. Absolutely. Right? Now, I hope I don't make the same dumb ones, but I'm going to make Repeatedly. some more. I'm going to make some more, right? So my point is, if since there's no self-love in our community, as evidenced by the fact that we got to dye our hair, we got to look like everybody else, we got to emulate the behaviors of our oppressor and all of that stuff, right? The images of our oppressor. You about to uh, change the conversation. As you said, no, I'm, I'm going back. I'm, I'm going to fix it. I'm, 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 I'm tying it up right now. So my point is, because we don't love ourselves in our community, then we can't accept the truth about ourselves. Mm. And accepting the truth about ourselves it means that we accept that we're going to fall short and that the best thing for us to do is accept responsibility for it than to make continued excuses over and over and over again to the point where if I'm an administrator at a school, I just sat and watched your child terrorize these folks all day long for you to come up there and tell me that's not what we do in our house. Mm, that right. that so doesn't you took, sound like my child. You took the analogy of him telling a child and being mistreated as them folks telling us for years how no, how no good we are. And Thank now you. We, we're doing the same thing. You did right, it much better than detriment. I did. You said it in a own, much fewer yeah. words than I was trying to get to. Yeah, yeah. That analogy of being a child and not wanting to tell the truth. I mean, being told that we've been told chastised, by society yeah. this over and over and over again to the point where even now as 51 year old men and 50 year old men, we rock around and in the back of our mind, we're like, man, I don't want them folks to think such and such and so and so. Peace and blessings to all of our businesses who are interested in advertising. We have great affordable rates. And if you'd like to advertise on our B2M Crew podcast, please reach out to us at B2Mcrew5 at gmail.com. But I think there mm. was a time in history, though, that we mm. we as... He's giving account of the... Uh, even coming out of, of that, community. right? Where there was a certain pride and dignity we had uh, as a community, uh, probably just off of um, um, being free or what have you, mm -hmm. right? That we took within ourselves that... That was a big thing, you know. You know what I'm saying? You, you look, you know, our family name. You know that has our family looking bad for one. And then <laughs> I'm big a, on that. Aside from that, has the community looking bad? Because then that you know these white folk don't think all of us do stealing and going around raping these women. Or you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, crazy or whatever. Master about it. is good white folk <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, fiddling on the roots. Yeah. But um, right. so there was a, a a period of time that I think we did have that that type of pride and, and understanding. But so where is it, at what point did we lose it though? And then it became a thing of, you know. Hey, listen. I, that's what we're talking quick. about the self -hate. Have you forgotten? Come on. Yeah. Right? That, that, mm -hmm. I quoted that last time. You were brought over here, you were robbed of your religion, oh, name, Dr. language, Collett. and right. all of that, yes, right? Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And many of us, by the way we act, we even lost that mind. mind. We lost that mind. True, so true. now, let me tell you something. I was talking to this sister that was going to Ghana. She's been going to Ghana for 30 years um, since, like, you know, when, whenever 30 years ago was, right? She's been traveling <laughs> in the 90s, early 90s. And she sponsors trips over there, right? And uh, I was like, how is it, like, I said, how is it that just, like, the living over there, like, daily life? And I, she said, what do you mean? I said, let me give you an example. Me and my friends went to Costa Rica, and we noticed that the people have a very pleasant spirit about them. That's just something we noticed. It just felt different over there. We really didn't see anybody mad. Pure Vida. Yeah, Pure Vida. We didn't see anybody mad over there. You know, nothing. People just kind of laid back. She's like, let me tell you something. When I go to Africa and Ghana, she said, you know what they come and ask me? I said, what? She said, they asked me, do we really shoot one another in the United States? Mm. Wow. In the black Do you community. really shoot one another? There? I said, what do you mean? She said, they don't hurt each other over there. She said, I'm not saying... There's not some kind of passion to happen, but the general spirit and commitment to the community mm. is that we don't do that over here. She said, for example, if somebody break into a store over there, before the police get there, the community going to handle it. Mm. If they see the thief, everybody going to chase them down. That's not what we do. And so my point is 
the that's not what we do was lost during slavery for us. You know what I'm saying? And then there were times in American history that even though we're free, we're free, you know, and we gained some community. Mm-hmm. Every time we gained the community, you talking about it was met with more violence. So after right. slavery ended, came Rosewood, Reconstruction. Tulsa, yeah, KKK began. Whatever. It, it was always met with more violence to to suppress the to community thread to the point where there are those that will argue that the crack, the heroin, and all of that was just further assault on the community structure. You know what I'm saying? I heard so, somebody said negative hip hop is the, is is the new crack and heroin to tear up our families. I ain't mad at them. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm yeah. not Man, mad. you know when I was, we were just in Paris a couple of weeks ago, and um, got in the car, got in the Uber ride, and the driver was from Africa. I think he was from Kenya, and um, and he said to me, he said, "Oh, you you know, in his accent, I ain't gonna try to use his accent because I'm terrible. James could do it, <laughs> but, but he was like, uh, you, you from America?" And I was like, "Yeah," he said. I am terrified of America. I said, have you ever been? He said, I have never been. I do not wish to go. <laughs> I do not even wish to go there. <laughs> That's exactly how I said it. <laughs> I am terrified. And he said, he said, everybody has a gun. He said, I bet you got a gun. You got a gun? <laughs> he said, you got a gun? I was laughing. You have one on you right I said, now. no, I ain't got one right now. He said, ah, but you got one at home, don't you? And so and like, as we went, <laughs> yep, yeah. I, I do I? I well, <laughs> I told him I, ain't, I I never had a gun in my life until we elected Trump. Until we elected Trump, so then, then I had to get one. But but now that you know, now that Trump go, I, I'm gonna sell it. But anyway, <laughs> he might be back. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna hold <laughs> on to it yeah, yeah, after 2024. If DeSantis come, you gonna sell it then? Yeah. If DeSantis wins, you gonna sell it? He gonna get another one. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, so get juicy. in terms of the the perception of our country and, and and how it is, I went to Canada, I went to Toronto, and we were driving. I got out and I left the passport. We get to the checkpoint. I put the passports in the backpack. They were in the trunk. I don't know. I get out the car. I lift the trunk. I'm going, getting the passports and everything. And the guy at the booth was like, get back in the car, get back in the car. I'm like, what are y'all uptight about? You know what I mean? And he was like, when Americans come up here, he said, we believe they all have guns. And that's why he said, if you were on the other side and coming into America, he's like, they, they'd have had the AR-15s on you. You know, like, like, because we don't know the gun culture, the accountability, the responsibility. That's what I'm gonna say. The way that ties back to the accountability is we don't trust that you're accountable to our laws based on what we see right. coming yeah. out of your and community. And they don't trust their own laws. <laughs> That's why they pushed the Second Amendment so hard. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, Trump had <laughs> us uh, people at the gun store that was anti. Racist and people that was racist. Right. Yeah. Everybody was at the gun store. But I, I know it seems far off, but this whole community accountability thing is if 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 we're all born into communities and we're all supposed to be trying to be good citizens, there is limited acceptance of accountability publicly or in our community and it and it pushed down to the family. How do you repair that? What's the answer to that? The people got to fix it, man. I don't think laws can. I don't think laws can fix I, I personal think, accountability. Exactly. I think the individual need to literally, and it might sound crazy. You yeah. really need to spend some time with yourself. Yeah. Law, laws can't change yeah. attitudes. You really right. need to. You need to really spend some time with yourself, and be extremely honest. You know, that's the first step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first step. So with it, so integrity. Back, so we take it back from that large scale, scaling it up to it being a microcosm of what's going on in society, <clears throat> back to the family unit. What did you all do? Or are there examples of what you did with your children to teach accountability and make sure it was something that lived inside of them and it wasn't just them responding to being afraid of you? In my household, it was very practical. 
If you come in my house, yeah, there's, the a, there's a no, bookshelf. Right. <laughs> there's a book. Yeah, this is our happy place. Yeah. And but I'm in charge of that happy place. And I'm, in, I'm yeah. responsible. I'm responsible. Yeah. Fundamentals of nah, okay. So yeah, bro. there's a bookshelf. And there are pictures of the family on the bookshelf. And at the very top is Darius and Kari. They're the last generation right now. They haven't had any children. Under that. Me and my wife, under that. Oh, you created like a little family tree type. You did an situation. inverted Absolutely. family tree. Structure. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. That's dope. And and every day I would always talk to them about that name they carry. I said, that last name that you carry, I gave that to you. I gave it to you in good shape. You make sure you give it to your children in good shape. My father gave me this last name. It was in good shape. All right. Now he gave it to me. I didn't turn it into Obama or Kennedy or whatever you might, whatever name you might hold in high esteem. I didn't I didn't turn it into that. But I also didn't turn it into Dahmer or Bundy or anything like that. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. So you make sure every single thing you do, Fancy. you are accountable to all those people right there. Every single one of them. You are accountable to them. And so. That was constantly pumped into my boys every single day. Every chance I got, I was like, hey, what's that last name? It's nice for my kids to walk around the street and if people say, is Waki your father? That's met with a pleasantry and not, oh, Lord, that's your daddy. <laughs> they do you know that too, man. They do that. He worse. Just, just, just go on. Just go on. Leave it. No such <laughs> <a> thing. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, he don't know it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nah. Hey, so, so, so for them, they know. Hey, man, that 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 name. I'm serious about that name, and don't you uh, jack it up. You know, I remember my son had an issue with one of his ex girlfriends, and she went on social media and she was ripping him. You know, mm -hmm. and as long as she was saying Darius. I was like, oh, poor fella. <laughs> when she said Darius win, oh, I was hot. I was hot. You know, that's a different, that's a different type of attack as far as I'm concerned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's family, a different type of attack as far as I'm concerned. And so I wasn't happy with that at all. You know. Did you handle well, anything or what you did you what you did you do? I made it clear to him that his choice had impacted this family in a negative way. And he needed to be much more aware of the types of choices he made. Mm. You know, wow. I, you know, it would have been nice if him and the young lady had worked out. That would have been great. You know, he would be, he would be happy. You know what I mean? I, as far as I was concerned, but it didn't. And when it didn't, that impacted. I felt like our family name in a certain way. But at the same time, you know, I'm not gonna say what I'm about to say. Did, you know, no, I was just. Did 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 he? Did, do you know if he had a, a a conversation with him, or he just he just took it on the shoulder? And just no, 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 no. Him? Just take it on the shoulder. I don't want you talking. You right. know, I don't want you engaging in that. I don't want no back and forth. You know, people going to the social media to see the fight. People right. going to social media to see and the it's mess, growing. and they're gonna see if it grows. Right. So if she's saying something about you, folks gonna look at it, and then they're gonna go to your page and see what you right. say. See what you trying to say. Well, guess right. what? If you don't say nothing and you don't respond. Don't eventually right it's no mess and it goes away or people start looking at this person like man she tripping you know what i mean mm -hmm. even even if what she's saying is true you right. know what i mean what, don't what, matter whether it's true what or they false. say what's they saying if you if two uh -huh. people argue they don't know which one the fool is right yeah you know two people I mean? arguing in the distance you can't tell which one is a fool i got yeah. it i got it i got it i got something for y'all real quick bottom line is, i'm just being straight up so we talking about accountability Right? A child does something. I'm gonna make a statement I want y'all to respond to. It. <laughs> but don't no yes or no answers. All right. If a parent fails, if a black, brown, or poor parent fails to hold their child accountable, they are increasing the likelihood that they go to prison exponentially. That that child ends up growing, growing up and going to prison. Big facts. So what are we supposed to nod our head? No, what's, what's your thoughts about how you, oh, what's your reaction you, to that? 
Oh yeah, for sure. What you mean though? What, what, do you, I mean, have you seen it? Have you? Oh yeah, it? I mean the thing. The thing is, man. You know, I think as a, I think as a parent, you know, you can handle a lot of the stuff. Um, I think as a parent, you can handle a lot, a lot of things that go on in this world. If if you, um, I don't know the word right. Maybe nip it in the bud or address. <laughs> let's say address it when it takes place. Let's let's not use nip it in the bud. Let's. You was addressing, right. huh? Nip it in the bud's good. Well, people got their own saying about that. Let's just say straight up, clean, address it when it take place. And I think when you address it when it take place, it don't give them a license to, did you really endorse some bad behavior, you mm-hmm. know? And and I think one thing um, is if you, if, if you check them, if you check them in the beginning and you don't let them keep getting away with it, then eventually, you know, based on if they just a real bad seed is one thing. <laughs> but most time, if you start keep on checking it, eventually, eventually it's going to pan out that they're going to stop doing, you know, and then they're going to be holding ourselves accountable, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you keep on letting it go and go and go, it's, it's just going to grow yeah, the, and the, it's going to turn, turn the, into the animal. enabling, as they develop and do more mature – Acts of rebellion against right. authority and against the norms. Your enabling grows in measurement to their growth in the wrong. Exactly. So I, you begin to accept more yourself. Like, you know, where I would have tolerated this three years ago. Now he just, I'm just saying he's stealing, but at least he ain't steal this. Hey, bro, right. Right. Now, we, now we quantifying the wrong. Yes. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. And so. And what that does, what that creates in the child, I've seen it so much in schools, man, where I, yeah. I'm telling y'all, the reason why I asked that question, because I have sat and said to myself, right or wrong, with somebody sitting across from me in my principal's office, and then contacting somebody in the family, whoever that guardian is, and then speaking with them, and then saying to myself, he going to jail. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey bro, one of the stories- He's gonna that- go to jail. And in, in too many cases, I've been sitting in my house eight years after being that principal. See him on TV. Tempted murder, armed robbery. Never was held accountable. Everybody made excuses for him. But you know, let me say this. What about the fact that I think we 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 all sit here in a privileged place because we got, you know, two parent households and all that stuff. What about the mama that is working? all day and night and the stuff that's happening she's not aware of she don't see none of that you know you mama going to work at seven in the morning getting home at 10 11 o'clock at night all kinds of stuff that has taken now place what, we privileged but we went through it i know yeah, I was gonna say, we grew up yeah, in those environments like and so right. you know one thing we said we got that episode coming with some of our mom yeah which one of our mamas was gonna tolerate us doing something and not hold us accountable right Huh? Quiet, hey, exactly. quiet on the set, no, and, 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 and your in your shit about it though. And, absolutely, and, and letting you know I'm not scared of you. This not gonna happen. Exactly. Absolutely, this not what we gonna do. You so not the, gonna do. I've made that point, so you can make that point. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the point is, just because you can't keep an eye on them twenty four seven, yeah, don't mean you let stuff go. Right. Don't right. mean you let stuff slide. You still must hold them accountable. Yeah, right. You know and, what I mean. And that's from establishing standard. And even if it's something as simple as, like, as you said, with the threat, uh, a veiled threat of if and it better not such and so and whatever. Oh, I can tell you exactly an, what the threat. That's was. That's enough. Go ahead. <laughs> even that's enough. My mama used cases. to always say to me, me and my brother, do not, not let them no, white, white folks, folks call me on, on my, my job. job. <laughs> <laughs> do not <laughs> on my job. Once it, <laughs> that that embarrassment you was talking Bro, about, yeah, yeah, all of yeah. that, you know, her kids unruly, they in trouble. She gotta leave and work was, again. People laughing at and, that now, just watching this. But this was this was when somebody had to call the front office at the building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had an yeah. operator. Then somebody had to go walk get your mama's supervisor. Take her to off. Come walk back there to get you to come back to return the call. <laughs> and, and, and get your mom to return the call. Yeah. And was, they they mad at doing all that uh, walking. Bro, uh, yeah. And I'm off, yeah. they off the line if it's a assembly line. Or <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 
them people ain't good. Them people gonna let me go. Hey, right. Because right? I'm yeah. a problem. Hey, yeah, bro. I, that's right. I, I always tell the story we was coaching a high school football game. Yeah, right? was at state. And uh, I heard a parent in the stand, put my son in the game. Put my son in the game. Oh, and I'm oh, looking, I'm like, uh, about to go somewhere. Yeah, I'm looking like, we well, ain't up 30, he's not getting in this game. You know what I mean? This, <laughs> this ain't Pop Warner. Yeah, you know, everybody right. don't get a certain amount of plays, right? <laughs> we, yeah. we ain't up 30. Yeah, yeah he's not he playing. Stink. Nope. Yeah, yeah, so after the game, <laughs> Coach Ivory was like, this one, this one for you, Yates. I said, all right. Parent came to me carrying on, right? Why don't your son play? So I wanted to say, because he's terrible, which was true. Yeah. But I still told her the truth, I said, listen, when we in practice, I got to tell him three and four times. He over there goofing off. I got to stay on him, which is taking attention away from the other kids who listen. He losing out on reps. And, and that's not fair to the team or himself because he's going to get injured because he don't know what's happening. He don't know the plays, this, that, the other, right? Which was all true. Well, he got ADHD and he on this and that. Oh. I said, man, is he taking meds for it? She said, yeah. I said, so half the team got it too. So what? <laughs> Everybody got something wrong with him. You know what I mean? Right. I said, but when he got it. when he gets pulled over by the police, or he's robbing us, whatever, he ain't gonna tell the police, oh, I got ADHD. Oh, okay, we'll keep it on, keep moving nah. on. Man. Your ass is getting locked up. Right. You understand right. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So that's what you were saying. There's yeah. no accountability. We all got something wrong with us if you look hard enough, right? Right. Every, and nobody's perfect. And so we, we keep making those excuses. Now you're not accountable for your actions because you have this attention deficit or whatever it may be. You know, you still have to be accountable, regardless. Right. But yeah. but you have to attach if 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 there's an action like um, you know, the law of physics that says for every action there's an equal and opposite Absolute reaction. reaction. Yeah. Well, when you don't hold your child, that's because in universal law, there's accountability. Right. And work. Karma, whatever you want right? to call it. Yeah. But and if you are dealing with a child and you don't hold them accountable, <clears throat> that law of physics is null and void. Because for every action, there's more rebellion. <laughs> it ain't no opposite reaction. That's that's the, the balance is it should the, the response to your negative behavior, society should be saying, no, 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 you can't do it. So you recall back. But when you you just get more licensed to ill. If there's never any any response to mm, it, you see right. what I'm saying? And so you just wasn't that the rap label? Yeah, license yeah, ill. That was a, a, a <laughs> Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Boys. Oh, yeah, license yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you you just got more license to do whatever you want to do with a bunch of adults defending, not only enabling your wrong, defending your right. wrong Doubling in down hopes on that it. you don't get a consequence, which is the very Thing you need yeah in order for you to grow and learn from what you just did straighten right. up your you, act you know what i'm saying yeah and so you thinking I'm, I'm holding you back now you know like i'm oh i got you and listen i've seen parents come in my office and lie for yeah. the child to get them out of a consequence when the parents know they violated somebody what are you telling them right. what are you teaching not values, so then when we see integrity. them on the news at 19 and they facing two life sentences and they violated somebody's family by taking their loved one or victimizing somebody and you say i know he got to be held accountable but y'all don't understand he really is a good child that's what they say and don't no mama want to be on that stand defending her kid in that manner right and if you don't want to find yourself in that situation then you better hold them accountable when they eight. You better hold them accountable when they ten, when they twelve. Bro, whenever I'm, they I'm step a, I'm out start, of line, I'm gonna start younger than that. Whenever oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Whenever of they course. step out back, of line, from the no, beginning, back when they the toddler, right? It's yeah. like nope, yeah. hot, nope. Yeah. You yeah, know? they two years old, laid out in the floor yeah. at the store. Yeah, yeah, right. all that stuff. Yeah, that's when it happens. You just bro. letting it go. Then you, you think can't, they not? Your parents can't even shop in peace. Yeah. Because the kid just so unruly. Where were we? I was. It happened in Paris. It was Where was I? Well, this lady. Uh, this la oh, okay. So we were, uh, oh, I was at a parking garage last Saturday in, in Alexandria, right? And this lady was in front of me. And it was hot. Y'all know it was hot last week. I, <laughs> by the time you ready to go out, you go, 
walking around all day and all that, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Paying for my parking, this lady in front of me, two sisters. Both of them got two children, two small children. They paying. I want to pay. I want to pay. I want to pay. The little girl want to <laughs> put the uh, parking pass in there. No, you can't even reach it. She starts going crazy. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> I want to pay. Pick me up. I, the mom was like, "No, you cannot. You know, you can't do this." She was like, had an accent. The other, her friend said, "No, little mommy, no. You just not. You know, we gotta go. You can't do it." The girl did another layer of nut nut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so now I'm standing behind them. It's almost five minutes. Like oh. I'm ready to put my damn ticket in there and just go. The mom gives in. Well, here, let me just pick you up. She had to put all her bags down, pick the girl up so the girl could put the parking ticket inside the thing, right? And I was sitting there. Me and my wife were sitting there. I was like, that girl is in control of everybody in that group. Right, right. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. She in control of both mamas and the other little kids because the other little kids were like this, right? Now, what message? She went. What? What? What do you do? Did you not have the energy to exert yourself over this little child, or do you not have the emotional endurance to deal with her noise in order to teach her a higher principle? That's that type of lazy parenting that I'm talking right. about. Right. Come because on. Because it don't feel good to you, so I'm just gonna do the convenient thing and, and let her get her way. Yeah, right. And then the next thing you know. She's dominating you from the time she's six till she's 26 and then got with some bad situation or whatever. You're trying to figure and out those how. are the daily battles that we're losing that we don't think about. That's the little crack in the wall that the drop of water is coming out of that's eventually going to cause the water crack. Yeah. And, if, and, and ultimately what the mom just did was reinforce that behavior. Yeah. Because she said, this is how you must act if you want what you want. Right, right. Which is the worst thing you can do. Right. right. And right. yeah, a lady was saying something to me. I was like, you going to take your daughter? She's like, nah, because she don't know how to act. I said, well, if she can't act at three, how she going to act at 13? You know what I mean? So if you can't control it now, it's not going to get easier. You can't go easier. somewhere. Look, look yeah. you can't go somewhere because your child not going to act right. Yeah. Yeah. I was then like, what, no, man, what happens is. You're just is, giving away the power. What, what happens is, you know, you had them real big explosions where. You know, nanny teenagers cuss you out and slap you. Yeah. Right. 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 You or know? you done nutted up and went too far. Yeah. Because it's boiling up. I'm tired of her. Oh, How you man, gonna say you tired of your child? <laughs> man, y'all fighting in the I'm house. I'm tired of her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, bro. You gotta you gotta have more energy to to if you love them, you know, uh they used to tell us in the Mars, you gotta love your people more than they hate themselves. Yeah. You gotta yeah. love your children. More mm. than their ability to try everything that you're gonna impose on them, as far as standing. Yeah, you gotta outlast them. You know, uh, otherwise you're gonna lose them. Yeah, you know. Yeah, definitely. Gotta be accountable. That's yeah. how you already said so. Oh nah. So an accountability. What are our guide? What's our guidance to to parents? What, what's what's the most important thing? Is that to consistently have a standard that you uphold. Oh, just, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we said Whatever we went to we it in the beginning. The root of it is integrity, and yeah, and, and, and we're talking uh, from a standpoint of having that. But for those who don't, so it has to be established. It's in the integrity, which is through uh, values and whatnot, values and standards, that then would allow them to make that make it easier to have you know take accountability and, and self responsibility. And the big piece to that is a well communicated standard. Yeah. That that everybody understands this is what the standard is. Right. This no, is no, what's no acceptable and, and in no other way. Uh something I would always share with my fellas was, you know, I'm not gonna always be around, you know, you're gonna make your own decisions. And from time to time, you're gonna choose to do some stuff you know you shouldn't do. Like we all have. Yeah. We've chosen to do some things that we know we should not do, okay? But here's what I do want you to know when you do that. I just want you to know that there is a consequence for what you're about to do. And before you do it, talk to yourself and say, okay, if I have to pay the price for what I'm about to do, I'm willing to pay the price. Then you have at it. Mm -hmm. Man, some things in life you ain't gonna be able to pay the price for. You can't recover from. You know what I mean? If you get in a car drunk driving 
and, and kill your best friend or kill somebody, yeah. was, some some stranger on the road, that's not a price you're willing to pay. Right. You know, you can't recover. Like you that. can't recover from that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So make sure you're willing to pay the price. And and sometimes the price for what you might be thinking, you know, do want to go over there and argue with his girlfriend and put his hands on her. You might accidentally kill her mm -hmm. and find yeah. yourself in prison for life. That's a real <laughs> thing, you know. Yeah. And so you you but so make sure you know what the price is before you do whatever you do. We've set a standard. I expect you to live up to it. And when you fall short, I'm gonna be there to hold you accountable so that you are, you know, not, man, I just saw, did y'all see in the newspaper where uh, Akeem Tlaib's brother was found guilty of murder? Yeah, at the football game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he mm -hmm. done killed somebody at a youth football game. Dang, wow. All right? Bro, that ain't nothing but accountability. That's it. Nobody, yeah. nobody want to be held responsible. The referee is always wrong. I ain't never seen the coach of AAU, man. Don't nobody commit a foul. Yeah. Ain't nobody foul. Ain't nobody travel. Ain't nobody walk with the ball. Ain't nobody messing up. Like, like, this a no perfect accountability game. whatsoever, <laughs> man. Yeah. And it's almost become intolerable to go to a youth sports it event. Is. It is. To go to a youth sports event in some communities because people got expectations and standards all out of whack and no accountability whatsoever. And an Kid ego. coming off the field, throwing his helmet, taking off his jersey. I remember one time, this is something else we have to build into. I had a kid, it was his first year playing with me. I'm gonna call him out, Jalen Hudson. I love you, son. And you might not even, he might not even remember this. We had a game where he got mad and came off the floor, took his jersey off and threw it down, whatever. You know, this is his first year playing with me. He don't really know how I operate. I'm like, all right, you're not playing no more. Go ahead, sit over there. You're not playing. So the next day in practice, I'm like, all right. I went to the store. I got a nice big cold Gatorade. And I took the chair and I set it in the middle of the floor. And I said, Jalen, here you go. Here goes some Gatorade. Everybody else, get on the line. All of y'all are about to run because of what he did yesterday. Sit here, drink your Gatorade, and watch your teammates run. All right? Yo, that was so – he was so uncomfortable. No, coach, I got to run too, trying to get up and run and all that stuff. But sometimes – Yeah, set in it. My point to him – is that you're not just accountable to you. Oh. Yeah. You're accountable to every yeah. single one of us. Yeah. Yeah. And your actions and your behavior impact all of us. We ain't never had that problem again. Jalen went on to be a fantastic basketball player, and I'm so proud of him, love him to this day. But in that moment, some of these kids need to understand that you are responsible to everybody, the team. So when you're on a team, you need to make sure you're doing your homework so your mama don't pull you off the team. You are starting quarterback, and we got a big game this week, and then your mama won't let you play. Yeah, Bro, you're not just accountable to yourself. It's not about you. Team. It's about all of us. Yeah, And you got to, got to, got to instill that in, in some people. That and scoreboard it, don't say Jalen. That scoreboard say Cavaliers. Yeah. Did they hop on Jalen? No, nah, they was like, <laughs> but you know what? You know you what? Out, yeah, yeah. Nah. Every single one of them was probably thinking, I'm glad I ain't make that mistake. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You had a mature they wanna, team. And they were and they was like, and they was and they was like, yo, we got you. But what that also did for him, I feel like, is it made him be like, I can't do that to them again. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, they, and, they, and they were they rallied behind him and was like, We got you, we got you, we're gonna run for you. So real quick, did you to, to use that um, method, was there something about him that you saw that you knew it would go that way? You know what I mean? Because, say, for instance, if the, if the child was a jack hole that didn't even give a damn about, you know what I'm saying? That <laughs> didn't hole. care about uh, <laughs> well, his, 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 his teammates or anything. Did you see that or it was just something that just came to you? You know what I mean? I know his family. I know his mom. Mm -hmm. You know, I know. You knew enough ain't. about him to know that he won't know he had a heart. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, yeah, and I so knew he would have compassion for his that. teammates. And okay. I knew, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I know that. So, so if I know. Great, it was a great discernment on your part. Yeah, you know, and if I know. Right, kudos, Wally. From, 
you know, as they, as they say, you 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 can tell a Seriously. you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. You know, it was just a moment where this young fella got emotional, and 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 and, and acted out in a way that was not the standard for our team. Oh, Tell me this, uh, Rocky. Where'd you get that from? You that was awesome. In yeah, the, uh, I just came the, up with. It. In the uh, <laughs> looks, folks, looks, folks. That, 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 that was genuine brilliance on the part of this guy. You know what I mean? No. In the Quran, it says, <laughs> "I made you into tribes and families that you, that you may, may know, know one, one another, another." Yes, sir. And not despise one another. Come on, brother. Right. And so, back to your thing about the team. This made me think about it. It's not just about the team. The primary basic unit of human civilization is the family. You have a responsibility to your family. Mm. You're not just in this family. Back to your, you started right. it off talking about the win name. That's right. You ain't got, you can't violate mom. She working two jobs and you causing stress. That's my brothers to me. That's you right. can't do that. Exactly. You got to fix that. So now we got community accountability too. Cause if mom come home upset, and she been working in this because of you, right? Then we got to deal with that. We got to check you. You know what I'm saying? If if you don't recognize that you got a responsibility, yeah, you did them people wrong. But guess what else you did? You causing stress to mom, exactly. To dad, they, they shouldn't have to deal with that. And yeah. so that's my point is, we keep on raising <clears throat> black, brown, and poor children based on this ignorance that we used to latch ourselves on to. These old sayings, some of them matter, some of them don't. But all of this stuff about just doing stuff without teaching them the idea behind it. Because when you say you got to have integrity to teach um, accountability, you know what you're really saying? What truth do we live by? Come on. Right. What I'm truth sure. is it right. that governs the life of the people that's living in this house, that's on this team? And the truth is that none of us harm it. None of us violate one another. None of us do this. And so anytime you're getting corrected, it's because you done violated one of the truths that we live by. And so for everybody out there not living according to a truth, I don't care what you go find. And you just winging it and letting social media determine your values and all of that, you setting your child up to go to jail. Mm. If you don't establish a truth in your own household. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 monitor that truth it's a saying in corporate america what gets monitored gets done hmm. mm -hmm. you like, can't have a whole bunch of rules like, and expectation and you ain't monitoring it nowhere to be found because yeah. you at the club yeah because you know society's not gonna give them the benefit of the doubt they're not you get mm -hmm. one chance and you, and you lucky right you right. really you might right. get half a chance and we and we haven't even talked we've been talking as a father to a as a parent but we haven't even talked about accountability amongst ourselves, amongst steel shop and steels, amongst men. And so for like young fathers, hey, hey, find an older cat. If you don't have a father, an uncle, you know, stick together and hold each other accountable. Mm. But that's a whole nother, no, another but level that, of conversation. But what you said is important though, because since none of us were handed a roadmap, right. then right. who else gonna keep us sharp except like-minded people that's trying to live according to a truth. I'm back right, on it. Exactly. And like, this is exactly me. why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We call yeah. each other out on like, man, you're tripping, man. Yeah. Right. And get out your feelings. Like, like get yeah. emotional, yeah. egos. Right. Yeah, man. Great place to leave it, fellas. Great place to leave the B2M Crew Podcast, talking about accountability and children mm -hmm. amongst ourselves. Uh, five brothers who have been friends for over 40 years bringing to you this podcast where we talk about parenting, current events, and all things supportive of black, brown, and poor culture. Um, we're here at the Code Building in Charlottesville, Virginia. This episode is one of our sponsors, wonderful facility, uh, co-working and entrepreneurial space. Center of Deve uh, Developing Entrepreneurs Code. Center of Developing Entrepreneurs Code, being produced by Win Productions, Fairville, Georgia Studio, Contact Win Productions for your media production needs in the ATL and mm, everywhere mm. if the price is right. So, Joaquin, you got something to take us out, man, this episode on accountability with? Yeah, man. In the words of the great Frederick Douglass, it is easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men. Peace. Yes.
And I won't stop until I'm winning, 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 winning I'ma show them how true and independent get it Old game changed by the time I finish with it We about to get this business handled in a minute And I won't stop until I'm winning, 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 winning They don't want me in the office cause I tell